Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Ben Stiller returns to the role of dunderheaded male model Derek Zoolander 15 years after the original in Zoolander 2 or Zoolander number two, as this poster indicates. And boy, number two is really an apt description for this long-awaited but ultimately lifeless sequel to the cult classic comedy. I mean, seriously, they made us wait 15 years for this? Look, when it comes to comedy, the litmus test is always, did you laugh? Because if you laughed, then that's gotta count for something. Well, I did not laugh, sir. I did not laugh once. But moreover, no one else in the packed theater did either. That's right, comedy is subjective, so I listened to see if this theater, full of people who paid to see the movie as early as possible, these diehards that have waited 15 years to bask in the glory of blue steel once more, what did they sound like? Freaking crickets. Seriously, the entire film. And it's not for lack of trying, let me assure you of that. This film tries so hard and cranks up the levels on everything to 11, be it the performances, the plot machinations, the production design, even the amount and frequency of celebrity cameos, that it just feels too overbearing, too obnoxious. No matter how many things this movie throws at you. Think fast, Magnum. Wait, no, Magnum, now! Ah, oh, come on! You got this, but you gotta focus. Oh, come on! Hansel, stop! You got this! Oh. Yeah. Maybe we could try a washcloth. Tequila! Hansel, no! Oh! No! It's not working! That's right, Derek. It's not working. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. There's no doubt about it. Comedy sequels are difficult. Comedies, the good ones, spring out of having specific characters struggle through specific comedic situations, and then they end up getting resolved with usually a happy ending. Writing a new adventure for these same characters that isn't a pure retread of the first movie? It's a challenge. The best and most recent example of a successful sequel is Anchorman 2. Same characters, different problems, different overall premise. The closest comparison I can make to Zoolander 2 is the drop-off in quality between the first Austin Powers movie and the second, and then to a much larger degree, the third. The first film was a silly, small-budgeted film with charm and originality. Then each sequel got more elaborate, with bigger budgets paying for bigger sets and bigger special effects and far less originality. In Zoolander 2, the opening minutes show us in thuddingly unfunny fashion how Zoolander and his modeling pal Hansel were laid low almost immediately after the events of the first film. They basically had to return the characters to where they started in the first one, because we're gonna try and do all the same story beats as the first one. That's the strategy here, to try and give you everything that worked in the first, only more, much more. Specifically, the filmmakers seem to think that what people really loved about the first one was all the celebrity cameos, because boy, if you thought the first one had celebrity cameos, Look, normally I don't spoil things like cameos. I didn't do it for the big short, for example, because there were only a few of them. And telling you who they were would sort of rob you of the three such instances of surprise. In Zoolander 2, there are so many celebrity cameos that I didn't even catch them all. I barely caught half of them. Scrolling through the cast list on Internet Movie Database, I'm hard pressed to name the moment where Kim Kardashian and Kanye West showed up, for example, but apparently they're in there somewhere and most of the cameos are arbitrary and wasted, with two exceptions. I did think that Sting and Kiefer Sutherland had some great fun with their bit parts. Again, not a spoiler, there are still plenty of surprise celebrities to show up, even though you will sometimes need to be told who they actually are. And most of their appearances are not only not funny, they're groan-inducing. Unfortunately, the same goes for the return of Will Ferrell as Mugatu the bad guy from the first one, and Kristen Wiig, who has been utterly wasted in two movies in a row now. The last movie that wasted her talents, The Martian, well, that one's a little easier to forgive. Both of these villains are given very little to do other than just menace the heroes and in the climax, which devolves into just a bunch of hysterical shouting and special effects. Oh, and another batch of cameos. It's difficult to justify why the movie needed both Kristen Wiig and Will Ferrell. I've got to say, I'm 
a little flabbergasted by Zoolander 2. Overall, the entire enterprise is just a waste of a lot of money and talent. And now, hours after I've left the theater, it's difficult to see Zoolander 2 as anything less than an embarrassment for all involved. That sounds like an empty bag of popcorn to me. If you liked or even loved the first one, I know you're excited, and this will be difficult to accept, but the bag is empty, people. There's really nothing here to recommend to you. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, click subscribe so you can keep up with all the latest episodes and so we can keep doing what we do. In the meantime, leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and here comes the Magnum.